All righty, and we are live with Midweek Momentum. Midweek Momentum is all about ideas, strategies, and tactics to propel your business forward. Today's topic is about influence. As you can see on your screen, it says, do you have influence? And what am I talking about when I say influence? Well, specifically, I'm talking about the book, Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion, written by Robert Cialdini. And Robert Cialdini is an excellent, excellent speaker, trainer, author, and thinker who wrote this book. It's a best-selling book. And if you're looking at your screen, you'll see on the bottom right-hand corner, that is the cover of the book, uh, Psychology, uh, excuse me, Influence, the Psychology of Persuasion. And if you look on the upper left corner of your screen, you'll see a picture, and that picture is Dr. Cialdini on the left, and uh, that's my mug on the right. And I've had the honor and privilege of sharing the stage with Dr. Cialdini three times at different events um, around the country. And every time that I have an opportunity to share the stage with him, I definitely learn something. Now, his book is a book that I read uh, many, many years ago, probably 15, 16 years ago. And it has um, done wonders for my creativity and my thinking and my ability to strategize. Um, it's helped me write better copy. It's helped me to do better product development. It's helped me to create better offers of products and services uh, for my clients. And it's done a lot of things for my business. And I just can't state enough how much impact uh, Dr. Cialdini and this book have had on my business. And so that's the reason that I chose to share um, these thoughts with you tonight. Now, Influence is uh, a, a, a book that's about, I think it's about 200 pages, 220 pages, somewhere around in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil those 220 pages down to six points, and these are the six principles of influence, and these are the principles that you will learn more about if you check out Dr. Cialdini's book. Now, I am in no way going to try and uh, give you everything uh, that's in the book. I'm just kind of getting going to give you an overview of the six principles of influence. And if it seems interesting to you, I would highly encourage you to go out and purchase the book. So we're going to start now with the six principles of influence by Dr. Robert Cialdini. So principle number one is the principle of reciprocity. And reciprocity basically means you do me a favor and I will do you a favor. Um, as humans, we have a tendency to want to return favors and pay back debts. And of course, the golden rule is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And one of my favorite quotes, and you'll see it on my website and you'll, you'll see it in other places that I have um, quotes and things like that, is a Zig Ziglar quote that says, you can have anything in life you want as long as you help enough other people get what they want. And without a doubt, that is based on the, the principle of reciprocity. Now, what are some examples of reciprocity in the business world? Um, well, any time a business gives out a free sample, um, that's a principle of reciprocity. Uh, even if it's a very small free sample, you still uh, have a psychological trigger that is activated that when somebody gives you something, you feel obligated to give something in return. So when a business gives out a free sample, not only does it enable you to, to test the product and see if you like it, but there actually is um, a proven methodology of uh, the reciprocity principle taking over that makes you more likely to buy from somebody who gives you something first. Um, a, a quick case study of reciprocity is the disabled American veterans. If you have ever received those mailing labels of uh, return address labels in the mail from disabled American veterans, you know what I'm talking about. Now, I happen to be on their mailing list, and I get their mailing labels a couple times a year. And yes, indeed, I do send them money. Now, interestingly enough, before the disabled American veterans started sending out those free mailing labels, they had about an 18% response rate to their solicitations for donations. It's pretty good in, in, the, in the first place. But after they started sending out those free mailing labels, their success rate actually went up to 35%. So that's from 18% up to 35%. Pretty phenomenal. And that's because of the principle of reciprocity. Principle number two in the book Influence is the principle of commitment. Now, we do have a deep desire to, uh, to co be consistent and to have commitment to things. And when human beings say they're going to do something, they generally will do what they can to make that happen. Quick example that you'll find in the book 
influence is uh, this example. Uh, Gordon Sinclair, who was a Chicago restaurant order, had a, uh, excuse me, Chicago restaurant owner, had a big problem with no shows. People would call the restaurant, they would make a reservation, and then they would not show up. So um, one of the things he tried was having his hostess uh, say a, a sentence at the end of the call, and uh, the sentence was this: "Please call if you change your plans." That's yeah, pretty good, and it did help to reduce no-shows a little bit. But then he changed the words ever so slightly, and I want you to pay attention to this because this is a great example of how just a few words in your copy, whether it be on the phone when you're talking to people or in writing or in a letter or in a sales uh, web page or, or anything else, a few words can make all the difference. Okay, so listen to this. They started out with, Please call if you change your plans. And then they tested, will you please call if you change your plans? And then they waited for an answer. And the person on the other line would invariably say, sure, I will call if I change my plans. So do you see the subtle difference there? Please call if you change your plans is a request for taking action. Okay, now. Will you please call if you change your plans? And getting a commitment of yes is a commitment to call. And it's a commitment to commitment. And guess what happened? The no-show rate dropped from 30% to 10% immediately. So that is a great example of influence principle number two, which is commitment. All right, influence principle number three is social Proof. Now, social proof is one of my favorite uh, principles of influence. And if you have ever seen my video about the importance of testimonials, and particularly testimonials on LinkedIn, you'll you'll know I you may know that I have a video about that. You know that social proof is a very very important thing for my clients. We use it very very extensively, and I think it would be an important thing for you too if you will use it. So social proof could be anything like um, testimonials, um, pictures or images of other people following the crowd. I know of one uh, very successful seminar marketer who actually creates videos of what's called the table rush or in other words people going to order products at the back of the room at, at their seminars and um, they've done some studies, and when they show videos of other people doing their table rush, uh, their, their uh, subsequent table rushes actually improve substantially because the, the principle of social proof. It really relies on people's sense of safety in numbers. Now, if you've never seen my video about, send me a note on the uh, webinar control panel and, or email me, and I'll be happy to send you a link to that video that talks more about social proof. And as a matter of fact, I do specifically mention uh, this book in that video uh, because it's so important in the way Dr. Cialdini explains it. All right, principle number four is the principle of liking. Now, this word has taken on a funny meaning in the last several years with the prevalence of Facebook, but believe me, Dr. Cialdini was talking about the principle of liking years before Facebook ever existed. And it really is, this is common sense. We as marketers and business people know that people like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. And liking is very, very important. And likability comes in many, many forms. So it could be anything from personal influence um, to friendliness to even just smiling. Now, one of the case studies in the book is the case study of Tupperware. Now, Tupperware is a product that everybody pretty much in the United States, at least, pretty much knows about it. You know what it is. You know what it does. You know that it's great quality plastic, uh, you know, kitchen products, and you know that they have a lifetime guarantee, and you know that Tupperware ladies travel around and knock on doors and sell Tupperware. But here's something that may, you may not have known: as many billions of dollars of Tupperware that has been sold, and as many branding impact uh, um, images and commercials and uh, uh, brochures and catalogs and Tupperware parties and everything that have been had over the 50 years that Tupperware has been in existence, they still show that if the person who is attending a Tupperware party likes the hostess, they are three times more likely to buy than if they don't, regardless of the product, 
regardless of their need for the product, regardless of the product quality, regardless of the price, three times more likely to buy simply if they have a favorable impression of the party hostess. So you can see that liking is a very important aspect of influence and persuasion. All right, principle number five is authority. Now, people have a sense of duty or obligation to people who have positions of authority. I have to tell you, um, when I'm dressed up and I am in a, a store or a mall, uh, for whatever reason, I find myself at the mall in a suit uh, once in a while, and or even just a very nice uh, uh, pair of slacks and a, and, a, and a dress shirt, people come up to me as if I'm the manager and uh, of, of wherever I am. It's crazy. Now, people are drawn to uh, others who have authority or exhibit authority. Um, this is why advertisers on television of, say, pharmaceutical products or um, things that can, that can uh, affect your health always use doctors in white coats to market their products because doctors in white coats exude authority when it comes to health issues. So job titles, uniforms, and even accessories can lend an air of authority. Let me give you another case study out of the book that I find very interesting. They took a man who was just a normal, average-looking guy, and on the streets of New York, they had him in a, in a very large group of people waiting for a, a, a green light to cross the street. They had him walk across the street on a red light. He was jaywalking, illegally jaywalking. Now, when he was dressed in jeans and a T-shirt, a few people would follow him if he was brave enough to jump out into traffic and cross the street. But when he, they tested the exact same concept with him dressed very sharply in a suit and tie, and it was amazing that three and a half times more people would follow him into a busy street against a red light illegally if he was dressed in a suit and tie than if he was dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. And that is a great example of the principle of authority. All right, the sixth and final principle that you would learn about in influence, the psychology of persuasion, is scarcity. And scarcity has to do with the principle that people are more attracted to things they can't have. So when we stand to lose something, we want it even more. The best and easiest examples to show of that are the uh, every Christmas there's some product or another that everybody just has to have, and of course the manufacturer didn't make enough. Well, do you think that um, the manufacturer always is, uh, is planning that, or do you think that sometimes that's an accident? Well, I happen to know for a fact that about half the time that is uh, an accident, and about half the time they actually plan the scarcity in order to drive up demand, and they withhold the product until the very last minute when people are buying the product on eBay at ridiculously high prices, and then suddenly they will, quote, unquote, find a new allotment and dump it on the market right before Christmas. And uh, lately I've seen that happening more and more and more, where a particular item is the, the item of the year. It might sell for $30 normally. Um, by December 20th, it's selling for $200. Well, let's say December 15th, it's selling for $200. And by December 20th, it's selling back for $50 directly from the manufacturer because they have used the principle of scarcity to drive up the price and demand for the product. I've seen this also principle used also in the real estate and in, in even the car uh, lot uh, arenas where people say, well, we have another buyer coming in and they're going to make an offer. And that prompts people to make an offer quicker. Now, the important thing to know about scarcity is that you should only use this when it's really true. Don't lie about scarcity. Uh, people will sniff you out, and even if they don't catch you the time, the first time you use it, they will catch on eventually. And uh, the principle of scarcity is a great principle to use if you use it ethically, and that's very important. So to review the principles of influence, we have reciprocity, commitment, social proof, liking, authority, and scarcity. Now, earlier today on Midweek Momentum on the morning session, a question came from one of the audience members, and I wanted to ask and answer that question tonight as well. And the question that came in was, Marty, can you give an example of how you use these influence principles in your business? And I thought it was a really fantastic question, so I'm going to take a moment to answer them right 
now. So the answer is, how do I use the principles of influence in my business? Well, you are experiencing many of these principles right here, right now on Midweek Momentum. And let me give you some examples of how. The principle of reciprocity, giving something away in order to gain later on. Well, I happen to do these webinars every single week. These webinars are free. I don't ask for any compensation for them. Yet they are highly valuable to me because the people who come on these webinars generally tend to do business with me eventually. Sometimes it's the very first time they hear me on a webinar, and other times it may take a couple of weeks. But the principle of reciprocity is definitely at play there. Principle of commitment, I'm not really employing that so much here on, on Midweek Momentum. Um, so we'll jump over that one and let's talk about social proof. Social proof comes into play when I uh, have testimonials and people that are writing on my Facebook wall, they're sending me testimonials that I'm publishing in emails, um, they're putting uh, uh, um, recommendations on LinkedIn, and that's social proof. They're telling others, hey, Midweek Momentum is a cool event, you can learn a lot, it's highly beneficial for you, you should check it out. So social proof happens every time I do a webinar on Midweek Momentum. All right, liking. Listen, let me ask you, if you've been on Midweek Momentum for quite a while, and I see a few new names tonight, uh, and I see a few who've been on here for a while, but if, I, if you've been on here for a while, there must be something about what I'm doing here that you're liking, or you wouldn't be on week after week after week. And I have some Midweek Momentum attendees who literally have been on every single webinar I've done in, the, in what, what, how long have I been doing this? A little over a year now, probably about 13 months. Um, they never miss one. Um, I have others that are pretty close to that. They miss one or two here and there, but they're they're here just about every single time. And others that are here probably once or once a month or once or twice a month. But something is happening that's making them like me, and um, I'm sharing. I'm being open. I'm being honest. I make mistakes. I screw up sometimes, uh, and that's part of uh, all in part of making or hoping to make people like me so that they will know, like, and trust me and want to do business with me. By the way, I'm really opening up here. I'm being real honest about exactly what's happening. And I hope that you understand that I'm being honest and very open and transparent with you so that you can leverage what I'm teaching you and use it in your own business. I don't do this to manipulate anyone. I truly do midweek momentum to give back. And if I never received a single benefit from it, I would still do it because I have a lot of fun doing it. It energizes me. But it sure is nice that I do benefit from it in the long, long term. All right, the principle of authority. Well, that one's pretty pretty simple. And, and uh, you know, when you're doing webinars and you're sharing information and people are gravitating to it and consider you an expert, uh, that's quite a bit of authority. Now, earlier today on the uh, earlier session of Midweek Momentum, one of our uh, attendees sent in a note and said, well, you know, a picture of you standing with Robert Cialdini, who this person happened to know, uh, really exhibited authority. And he made a great point. And so I'm actually... Um, kind of leveraging the authority of Dr. Cialdini uh, by putting this picture out there. So definitely the principle of authority is one that I use and leverage and recommend that you do as well. And then finally, scarcity. Um, I do leverage, uh, employ scarcity, even on Midweek Momentum, I use it on a lot of other um, projects that I do as well. Um, but a couple of the ways that I do scarcity one is that even though I record every session, I don't always post every session. Matter of fact, I post less than half of the sessions. Why do I do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is because I want to have scarcity. I want people on the line live. I like the questions that I get. I like the feedback. I like the sharing. The live audience is much more energizing to me than creating a video, posting it on YouTube, and having people watch it. So I do that because I want that energy. But I also do it because of the scarcity principle. I want people to know that if they miss a midweek momentum, there's no guarantee that they are going to get the content and they may miss out. So the scarcity principle is uh, being employed there. So those are some of the ways that I use reciprocity, um, a little bit of commitment, some social proof, liking, authority, and scarcity. Those are the six principles of influence. Those are some ways you can use them in your business, and those are how I'm using them in my business. Well, I hope that you learned today from uh, the great book, Influence. Um, it's written by Dr. Robert Cialdini. It's sold over 2 million copies and been translated into 26 lang languages, 
has been listed in the New York Times bestseller list for a very long time, and Fortune Magazine actually lists influence in its uh, 75 smartest business books of all time list. I'd probably list it in my top three best business books of all time. What does the New York Times, or excuse me, what does Fortune Magazine know anyway? So that is my talk for today. It's a little bit about Influence, the book written by Robert Cialdini. My name is Marty M. Fonke. I appreciate you joining, and I hope that if you want to learn more about this topic or any others, you'll join me for Midweek Momentum every Wednesday at midweekmomentum.com.